Welcome back to Biotechniques on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the principles of nickel affinity chromatography. So as we know, chromatography in biochemistry is a technique that's used to separate um, all sorts of kind of molecules. Um, this is going to be a technique that's going to be used to separate proteins, but this kind of chromatography is very good for separating a specific kind of engineered protein, which is very, very common. And that's what's called a histagged protein. So what is a histag? A histag is, some, is, a, is a segment of usually about six histidine residues. So histidine is an amino acid. And you can put six of them in a row on usually the N-terminal end or the C-terminal end of a protein. And the histidine tag, so six histidines, impart some important properties to the protein. So I'm going to briefly go over to this uh, slide right here. Um, and what you see here is here's my protein, and you see here six histidines. Um, they're on opposite sides here, but there's six histidines right there. This is my six, a six X histidine tag, so there's six of them. And what these histidines do, based on their imidazole uh, group, which is their R group, they can actually bind certain things. And it turns out that the histidines are really good at binding nickel. And we're going to exploit that property in nickel affinity chromatography, which is going to allow us to separate and isolate proteins with a 6x his tag, um, which will be added uh, via this process here. All right, so let's talk about how you actually get a 6x his tag or just a his tag onto a protein. It's actually a pretty complicated process, and most biochemistry labs, you would not, at least course labs, you would not actually do this process, it would probably already be done. What you generally have to do is you actually have to isolate the gene of interest. We're gonna use what we've done in previous examples in this playlist, the cytochrome C gene. This is the CYCS gene. This is actually the DNA segment of it, okay? It's in green. I also have to have what's called an expression vector. They're a lot more complicated than this. These are circular plasmids that are typically found in bacteria. Um, but some of these expression vectors can be used to force uh, a cell to express um, a certain protein. So right here I have what's called an insert site. Um, this is the site where I'm gonna basically break the plasmid apart and insert this gene for cytochrome C. On the left of the insert site, I usually have a couple of things. One, I have, I could have the 6S his tag. Being on this side, this would actually add the his tag on the N-terminal side of the protein. Sometimes you'll see something on the right side. It could be a, a fluorescent tag, like green fluorescent protein. Um, in one of the labs at the school I used to go to as an undergrad, they actually have a setup very similar to this. So I have on the N-terminal side, or 5' prime side, because it's DNA, I got the his tag. On the 3' prime end, which will be the C-terminal side of the protein, I have a GFP tag. So through a process that's more complicated than this, you're going to split open this plasmid, you're going to insert this uh, segment, this is the gene for cytochrome C, and notice how it inserts right here. I'll have the 6S his tag, the cytochrome C gene, and then the green fluorescent protein tag. The, you now you close this plasmid, so now it's closed, and you can actually force this into certain bacteria such as E. coli. That's called transformation, and this is a vector because it's going to uh, transmit this gene. You're going to force this vector into cells like E. coli, grow the E. coli, and then the E. coli will be forced to express this protein for cytochrome C. However, on the N-terminal side, now it's going to have a histidine tag, so six histidine residues right at the N-terminus, and it will also have green fluorescent protein on the C-terminal side. This green fluorescent protein is not necessary for nickel affinity chromatography, but it can help tremendously in downstream steps um, later on in your procedures down the line. So this E. coli will now express this protein. Now, if I want to actually isolate cytochrome C, I can use this histidine tag in nickel affinity chromatography to my advantage. Let's go to the next slide. So first of all, I'd have to take these bacteria, which in this case are E. coli, lyse them, and that will release this protein of interest. So I now have all this protein right here. This is my cytochrome C uh, with the GFP and his tag, right? 
Then I'm going to incubate this sample with uh, the, what's called nickel NTA agarose beads. So nickel NTA, that's what these are shown right here. It's nitrito triacetate. Um, that's what NTA is. You have a resin bead right here that's connected to uh, this nitrogen that has three acetates coming off of it. So these acetates are negatively charged, and these three acetates together will actually bind this nickel cation. Okay, the nickel is charged, the acetates are all negatively charged, and they will chelate or hold that nickel in place. Okay, I've got one of those NTAs right here, another one down here, and they're both bound to nickel cation. So when I incubate the protein with the nickel NTA agarose beads, what happens is the histidine residues of any protein with a 6S his tag, those histidines will also bind to the nickel. And so what will happen is, on one side, the nickel is bound to the NTA, but on the other side, it's bound to this his tag. And so that's one way of holding on to this protein with the his tag. Generally, once you've incubated and you have now bound protein, that is the his tag is bound to the NTAs, you usually wash it with a salt solution. So any proteins that are not bound to the nickel will just wash through and you're done with those, basically. Okay, um, this interaction between the histidines and the nickel is very strong, so it's generally not enough to, it's, it's, the salt is not enough to wash out uh, this protein. But then, once you've gotten rid of pretty much all the proteins you're not interested in, then you're going to elute uh, this protein by uh, throwing in what's called a competitor. This is just straight imidazole. Uh, it's not an amino acid, this is just the R group by itself, the molecule imidazole. And what the imidazole will do is it will compete for the nickel because it's the same uh, functional group as what's on the histidine R group. So the imidazole will compete for the nickel and it will essentially knock off or displace the his tag and then the protein with the his tag will fall off and it'll allow you to loot those and then this fraction right here should pretty much just contain um, polyhistidines, um, which is the 6S his tag. And so now you've isolated your protein of interest into this tube, which in this case is our cytochrome C. Just our example here. So now I have two fractions basically. I have the one that has the polyhist tag, which is my cytochrome C, my protein of interest. Over here I have a bunch of other proteins. These are the proteins that didn't have the his tag and therefore washed out with the salt solution. Uh, so if I compare these two samples. Let's talk about before nickel affinity. So basically this could be my, um, my wash step right here, the sample from that. Or before I ever did the process, I could test that through an SDS page and I'd still see all of these proteins here. Okay? Because I haven't yet separated out the proteins that don't have the his tag, so I have everything. But if I just test the fraction that should only have the, the his tag and therefore only my protein of interest, I might just see this. Okay, in this lane. Um, most everything el else has been filtered out, and so the only thing really remaining is my protein of interest, which is, which had the his tag. And so what you can see here is in the nickel affinity uh, trial, so after, after I actually get this fraction right here, it's much purer because all this other gunk down here, all these other proteins I don't care about, are gone. And so that's the principle of nickel affinity chromatography. Now, this type of chromatography is, an, is a type of affinity chromatography, which is widely used, but this type is really only applicable when you have some entity that will bind to the nickel. And really the most effective thing that binds to it are these his tags. And since his tags are really common um, in uh, genetic expression, for forcing bacteria and things to express, uh, it's a very common technique to separate those proteins um, because this is the most effective group just about to bind to the nickel. All right, so again, a purification slash separation technique, but very useful in molecular biology and biochemistry. All right, so hopefully the principle of nickel affinity chromatography makes sense to you. How you actually get the protein to be expressed with the his tag and the GFP. Again, this process right here is actually extremely complicated. I just showed you uh, the very basic idea. And then hopefully it makes sense the actual general process of the nickel affinity chromatography. Again, it's a longer process, but this will get you the basic idea. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.